magically goes away. It doesn't like white paper. So whatever. You guys are going to have to put up with it. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm trying to figure out how this whole thing, contraption, all the drillings work. I figure it out, you know, by using a lot of pictures on the web, on, at, on the F7s, F2s, F4s, F6, whatever. Da, 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 da. These are, this is an F11. Okay, F11. So this is what I've got right here. This is the little passageway towards the center of the throttle. You know, that little thing that we put in the middle. Okay, so basically air comes in this way to the throttle, yada, yada, yada. So we got vacuum right here. All this is vacuum. This is also vacuum. This area right here is under vacuum. Okay. So the only way fuel can get in is through here. And these, these little holes right here, they go in and fill in these edges right here. Okay. All these edges right here, they get filled with fuel. Okay. It gets pulled up. And these right here, they're all nothing more than air leaks coming in from here. Okay. Air coming in and basically doing this okay coming in and doing this coming in shooting up doing this shooting up and go doing this shooting up and going doing that so on and so forth okay that's all that's all it's happening okay Okay, and welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna talk more IDF talk. Ooh, you're like, damn it. Here we go again. Yeah, here we go again. Uh, been messing with the IDFs. Um, I actually figured out how these things work. These emulsion tubes. This is an F11. Okay, but before we go there, we're gonna talk a little bit about the carburetor that I'm running on my bug. Okay, so just so you guys have an idea where I'm at. Because a lot of you guys probably want to know where I'm at. Okay, so you, uh, if you guys were paying attention to my channel, you'll remember that I set my, my, my fuel bowl somewhere around there. Right in the middle of this little nub. The very bottom edge. Okay. This bottom edge to about the middle. Okay, which is three millimeters. Um, the very top over here is six millimeters. So what I did is uh, I went back to six millimeters, like yay, that height right there. And uh, I think that's where, you know, where, where I can get to the red limiter real quick. Like, you know, real quick. This way, I'm just not getting there. It's just not happening. So it's not happy. Carburetor wasn't happy with my two, my 32 millimeter Venturi. It's, it's just not happy. So I went back to that. But I'm still running rich on my... Uh, on my on my cruise or too close to uh, rich uh, I'm inside storage by a hair okay by a hair okay but I don't like it so I want to get more towards the middle of my storage now at this point in, uh, I'm assuming that you guys are very familiar with wide band or narrow band okay we'll be talking about on my case I'm using a narrow band I'm sorry narrow band it's the other one fool <laughs> I do have a white band and it's brand new, but it they're, they're not very reliable. So I'm not going to go into it. So I'm using the narrow band. So, okay. For what we're going to be talking, I'm using the narrow band. Right. Of course, narrow band, if you know more or less how to translate that to wide band, then, you know, you're in, you're in there, man. You're in there. You should be able to. It's not that hard. So I've got that done on the carburetor. So we're putting this back the way it came. This is my spares, okay? These are, I haven't touched. I haven't recalibrated them, so I'm not going to do that right now. So just, just wanted to show you. Okay, as far as my idles, I'm still running 52s, okay? 52 idles on the 2-liter engine. I'm running the 32 millimeter, two, thir yeah, 32 millimeter Venturis. So, and um, as far as mains, I'm running 125s. 125s, okay? On the mains, uh, the air corrector that I'm running is a 200. That's the air corrector. This is the main. This is 130, uh, 125, 125. Okay, so I'm not gonna touch them. I'm gonna just leave them alone. Okay. Uh, so what I discovered on these F11s, this is an F11, by the way. This is what 
most commonly comes with your with your carburetor F11 okay um, you should be able to make this work with any combination after you learn what we're going to be talking about oh I just did this because I was trying to, to uh, visualize in my head what I was uh, what what epiphany went into my head and I and you know just I just like wow this is actually very simple okay very simple because I already know I already drove my car by modifying this and I'm going to tell you what happened and now I'm very close to being almost right in the middle of Stoich. What? Yeah, right in the middle of Stoich when I'm doing 3000 RPMs, which is about 65 to 70 miles an hour more or less. Okay. So, this is what I did. So basically cuz on a hunch I was thinking, okay, so this is very close to this part right here. Let me Actually, you know what? I'm going to use these as, as a good example right here. Okay. Okay. You know, you, these guys go in like that, right? Okay. Main to the bottom, right? Okay. So I was like, okay, the orifice right here that goes to the center right here, to this thing, um, is actually very close to here. Okay. So I was like, wait. So because I'm, you know, I'm running really rich at 3,000 RPMs, so all I have to do is just open this, right? On a hunch. So this was a hunch. I still hadn't had my epiphany. <laughs> epiphany. Whatever. Whatever. Um, so I went ahead and opened this. I drilled it out to 115s. These are all originally 100s or one uh, millimeter. This is a 115. There we go. So 115. Oh, no, it's 16. Little shit. Oh, there we go. Start cooperating. <laughs> they don't want to cooperate. Okay, 15, right? Okay. So, what I discovered is that these are actually 105s or 100s. Let me see what they read. I'm sorry. I called them 100s. Uh, it's, it's actually 105s uh, millimeter. Okay. And as you can see, the 105 goes in really tight, okay? They're really, really tight. It goes into every single orifice really tight. See? Okay. Every single orifice is, is 105. Every single one. See? And so on and so forth. Okay. So all I did, just as an experiment, it was drill out this one I actually went just straight like that with this bigger drill which is a 115 just went you know like that and then I just put them back and I went for a drive and to my shock it actually worked okay my stoich went up to towards the center and I couldn't tell any difference in, in other words, there, were, there, were, there was no loss of power. If anything, it felt a little bit more peppier uh, at 3000 RPMs. It's just like, whoa, like really, hey, okay, now it really wants to go, okay? But then I would go flat out all the way down and I would go super rich again. That means that these over here correspond to the higher RPM. So high, when you have them like this, you know, the, the, the air corrector is right here. The main is down here. Okay. The high ones correspond to the low RPM, which is about 3,000 RPMs. The very low one on this right here corresponds to the highest RPM of your engine. We're going to call it 6K. Okay, 6,000. Middle, somewhere in the middle, like, like right here. We're going to call it somewhere around 4 to 5K. Okay, somewhere in there. Somewhere in there. Okay? These down here are actually somewhere around here. Maybe 5,500 RPMs. These right here. Okay? And these right here, we're going to call these 6,000. So, the epiphany came like this. If you have a Y-band, like yay, or I'm sorry, like a wide band or a narrow band, and you already know where you're going rich and where you're going lean on your RPM range, you just make notes, right? You're making notes. 
or better yet, you have a maybe a data logger. Okay, now you know exactly at what RPMs you start going rich and where you start going lean. Okay, you can just grab this guy, flip it upside down. See, the jet now is pointing towards the 6K. The air jet is now pointing toward the 3K. And you can just do this like so and align it with the, the RPM marks, okay, from, from your angle, okay. So what you do is you go, okay, so in, in this scenario, we're running really rich, like actually like something like this. We're running rich or like, like that, okay. And then let's just say on, the, on this scenario, we actually end up going lean. This is for demonstration purposes. Mine actually keeps going like, like crazy like this, okay. Keeps going like that, like that, 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 like that. Okay, it does that. It's just super rich. Okay, but let's say you were way over here. Just, just so you understand where we're going here. <sighs> okay, so what you would do here to correct this, all you do, okay, you, you look, you, okay, so you go right there, and you would drill out with a bigger drill, or if you don't want to use a bigger drill or anything like that, and you just want to use the same orifice, the same drill, you would drill another hole at the same level, same height that this one is okay you would drill it right over here let's say new hole is gonna be right there okay that is actually going to lean out this area this is gonna go bye bye this is no longer gonna be there that's actually gonna shoot up about to here and then it's gonna go again rich okay on your RPM range so what you would do now, you would go over here on this, on these, uh, where there's a whole bunch of them right there. And you would open, I would personally just open one a little bit. Or I would actually uh, either drill, drill what, like this one. Oops, let me grab the other, where's my other little, there it is. I would either open this one and see what it does. See if I can uh, lean it out. Or I would just, you know, open these up a little bit, these multiple ones, and like one or two, just, you know, just don't do more than two, okay? Don't open more than more than two. And then go for a drive and see what it does. But basically, if you open up th this one, and maybe that one, this is what's, what's going to happen. Now, instead of going fattening up this way, all of a sudden, now you're going da, 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 higher, 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 higher uh, in the Stoich area. And now you're getting to uh, way, let's see, that would be, yeah. You're about to here now in the Stoich area, but here you're, you're, you're going lean. You're like, poof, what the, you know what? It's just a scenario, okay? Let's say you're going super lean. What you would do there now, you would actually close up one of these holes. That one or that one. Okay, you just close one up, okay? That is gonna force this line back to Stoich, okay? Now, let's see, like on my scenario, on my bug, basically it does this, right? Like goes, it just goes crazy rich, okay? That would mean that I have to make more holes. Uh, I would say because it's a lot, I would probably either drill one hole right there one hole right there and maybe let's see one maybe another one right there okay that should bring this back to the center so so it doesn't do that it'll actually keep going straight instead of going through a ridge in summary all you really need to know is this okay you plug up a hole and you get more fuel plug means more fuel you open up a hole or drill a new hole and you get less fuel anywhere on here so like we said this would be 6,000 rpms right here you might be going to 7,000 okay I, I realize that i realize that or maybe 8,000 whatever uh this would be your center rpm range right here Okay, all this right here. 
and your your uh when I say center RPM would be like 4,000, okay, 4,500, whatever. Your, you know, 2,800 to 3,000 RPMs, that would be this bottom one right here. Okay. It's really that simple. These are not that hard to figure out. I mean, I don't even know why it took me so long to actually investigate this. This is how I fixed my... Uh, buggy now I'm running stoich uh, we'll go for a drive and see what happens this is what I uh, what I did to the, where is the yeah what I did on mine let me grab the other one because this one's all these IDS from China what I ended up doing on mine I drilled one right here okay to lean it out and then I drilled out this one right here, which is a, a step lower. Drilled it out also with the with the 115. I did both of them like that, exactly like that. I left these alone. Okay, left them alone. This this one is going like super rich. So what I did is I just drilled it out, and then I drilled it out like that. I wouldn't have, you know what, I wouldn't have, I shouldn't have done all four, but it worked for me. I wouldn't do it, I, in retrospect, I wouldn't do that anymore. I, I would have done it just to, on that area, for the high RPM range, which would be like that, corresponding to that, okay? And this one would correspond to this, okay? So when you do this, on your graph or whatever, you start they start to align. So that you know exactly where to drill. Actually. There you go. That would be about there. That would line up. See now you know more or less where you're running fat in here. And that's what you would drill. It's really that simple. It's 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 better in real life. The camera is not cooperating for that, but it's kind of blurry, but you guys get the idea. All right, moving on. Um, that is pretty much it for this video. This is a short video. I just wanted to let you guys know what I did to get these things to actually work because they run they run really rich. And because they're running rich, I think that the orifices here are actually not correct. If you want to if you want to and if you would want to have original parts, I would order four of these, but they would have to be uh, hundred percent Weber, okay, and run them and see what it does. Okay, I have a feeling that maybe you're also going to have to mess around with the Weber one, but you never know. They might actually work perfectly because the orifices are actually the correct size. All right, so basically, I just changed my fuel level, but I want to check everything. This is actually like the fourth time I've had to adjust the float to get the same amount of fuel inside the bowl so that's what I'm doing right now so here's my thing basically I just want to see if this thing oh, I don't know if I can show you guys because I had the deck lid and before I didn't have the deck lid so it was actually easier to do okay right about there Right there. Okay, so I have 32.45. Let's see over here. Right there. So I have... 3188, a difference of about 50. Yeah, that's close enough for government work. Within 50.50 50, uh, millimeter, uh, that's, that'll work. So I'm gonna put it all together now. Yeah, so don't assume that just because you calibrated the classic, the old fashioned way, that you're gonna have the same amount of fuel. You have to check your bolts or it will never run right, okay? Check the amount of fuel in your bowl. There should be 
very close to identical. Um, when, you know, 0.5, it's not going to really make much difference. But when you have one, one millimeter difference, that'll make a difference. Noticeable difference. That you won't be able to calibrate your, your jets. You'll never, you'll never ever get it to produce maximum power because one carburetor is going to be running rich and one is going to be running lean. Simple as that. Okay, she's all back together. Um, I want to see how this thing works. I've never tried it before. I want to see if there are the, car the, the, the carburetors are car calibrated. I just did it by ear. I just want to see where I'm at. All right, I might have to adjust my idle. We are exactly five. See, uh, see this one. Oh, my hair off. Oh my God, I'm a hair off. Oh well. It's uh, slightly above five. God damn it. You know what that means? Means this one I have to open up a uh, hair. So I'm gonna adjust it. Right there. A hair above five. A hair above five. It drives pretty nice. Um, okay, it's responsive. Remember I had to do this like three times to get the fuel level correct. So check your fuel levels. Don't assume. I just want to see if it gets to the red limiter. And here we go. Okay. It, it does. <laughs> it does. Let's see what happens over here on the freeway. I want to see the stoichi thingy. I'm doing about eh, 73, whatever. Look at that. I think it worked. Oh my God, it was that simple. You know, I had to dry it out and visualize it so I can visualize it properly. And I was right. Emulsion too. Oh yeah, and almost forgot the most important part. You can use solder to plug up a hole. Okay, if you if you if you went too far, you can plug up a hole with solder and then reopen it with a smaller diameter uh, drill. It's not a big deal. These are not that important to be super smooth or anything like that. These could be all jagged and all effed up, and they would actually work better because the emulsion would actually mix the fuel a lot better. All the jagginess would fix it so don't worry about it you can use uh, solder or you can use epoxy um you know jb weld or whatever uh, to plug up a hole okay as far as opening the open the opening up the hole you, well you use a drill <laughs> being sarcastic okay moving on so yes boys and girls that is how easy the emulsion tube can be manipulated um this is you know i'm assuming you guys are familiar with your wide band and narrow band or data logger okay do not try to do this just by gut feel you need information from your wide band or narrow band or data logger do not try to do this or if you have a you know if you have a uh, a dyno whoo even better right um do not try to do this that that is my warning do not try to mess with the with your uh emulsion tube without knowledge of where you're going rich where you're going lean all right that is it muchachos and muchachas we're going to call it a day later uh, don't like it
Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, you can see that. That one has substance. That's got like orchestra style bass. Uh, that's, that's what I love, actually. So I'll listen to it for a little sec, a couple of seconds, and then if I don't like it, I just go to the next one. If I like this, I'll just download it to the Android. Woohoo! And then I just use that on, you know, when I'm driving on the freeway and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah. That's exactly what I like. This kind of music. I don't know why. It has to be or or orchestra. I can't even say that word. Orchestra. I can say it in Spanish. Orchestra. Not even in Spanish. Orchestra. Oh yeah, that, that was correct. I <laughs> just had to double check myself. <laughs> yeah, because I'm weird. Yeah. I, it's my life, you know. I love doing this stuff. I know. Uh, that's one of the reasons I don't go to like uh, the car meets and stuff like that because I know there's not people like me there. When they break, when they made me, they broke the mold. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So they they don't like stuff like this. It's like it's like the you know the organizers keep the music down. What? You can't even rev your engine and you know. See who has the loudest muffler, like, wah, bah, 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 bah. you can't even do, no, man, that's, uh, to me, it's boring, so I don't go to car meets, I, not that I don't like the car itself, you know, looking at the cars and looking at the way they, they, they creatively created that stuff, it's like, you know, I like that stuff, okay, but, you know, uh, Motorhead is a Motorhead and generally never goes beyond being a Motorhead, me, I'm a techno geek, okay? I love computers. Don't let me near your computer. I will find out your darkest secrets. Do not let me near your computer, okay? I used to teach the AA certified uh, Microsoft uh, graduates, okay? How to <laughs> go in the back door. <laughs> you know, I'm techno -y, electronics, uh, mechanical, electrical mechanical, bodywork, upholstery, you name it, I've probably done it all in my life. Okay, even a truck driver. I'm a truck driver. Never saw that coming. <laughs> Never saw that coming. You know, I love it too because I get to see the world. Believe it or not. So I've, I've done a lot. I mean, I used to fly. Like, must have on my one of my jobs. I I, I must have gotten on a plane at least two hundred times. Two hundred times flying to a job. Okay, to another job, and then back, and then flying back, and, then, and so on and so forth. That was, uh, that's not good for a marriage, so I kind of had to move on. But anyways, <clears throat> um, yeah, I love my life. If I, if I have to do my life again, I'm just, I wouldn't change a thing. <laughs> okay, maybe there's a little thing, yeah, that situation happened. Yeah, maybe, okay, okay, just a couple of things, but when it comes to major, I wouldn't change anything. You know, I love doing all this stuff. I'm, I love the creativity. And I'm just rambling on. I don't know why I'm doing this. Anyways, whatever. Yeah, that's what I do. Just download some bass. Because when I'm going to be 90, 95, I got to have my stash. You know, tell boom, when I'm 95. If I still have a driver's license. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> Let's see this one. It's not moving forward. I don't like it. No, I don't like it. No. I already know the tracks. I know what they are, so I just move on. Why? Why is it that always there's always a naked chick with her butt cheek sticking out or breast sticking out in a in an album? What is it? What is it with that? It's not like what is that? Is that really reality? Come on, man! That's not even reality. It's like whatever. <laughs> it's like why even do that? Moving on. Bass boy. I remember that that thing. That's just like brass monkey, but it's bass monkey. They're trying to copy it a little bit. I don't like it. I like the original though. No, I don't like it. See what I mean? Another butt cheek. That's her ass. And some legs going that way. I was like, what, what is it with that? Whatever. No. No. Oh, Basegasm. That's uh, Tech Master Peb. Oh, yeah, it's right there. Tech Master Peb. Yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. I remember that one. I used to base this one with my old system that I used that somebody stole. Damn it. It's it was a little bit this one this system right now is a little bit better than the system I had back then. But it was still really good. I remember the cop that pulled me over said, Man, I heard you coming two blocks away. I was just waiting for you. And my windows were closed. <laughs> My windows were closed. He was, he was waiting for me. He was like, he could hear me. I was like, officer, you saw my windows. They were closed. You could actually hear me. He's like, yeah, I could hear you. <laughs> okay, whatever. Moving on. Okay, I got to go. Bye.